70 current and former NYCHA employees have been arrested in a massive corruption probe. The U.S. attorney says NYCHA staff were part of the largest single-day bribery takedown in Justice Department history. Well, instead of using money to repair the tenants' apartments, the prosecutors say they lined their own pockets. They're now charged with accepting cash payments from contractors in exchange for awarding NYCHA contracts. These contracts were valued at under $10,000. But they involve essential work in NYCHA buildings, such as plumbing or window repairs. The contracts were sometimes called no-bid contracts because they did not need to go through a competitive bidding process. Joining us right now to explain all of this, NYCHA CEO Lisa Bova Hyatt. Nice to have you here. Thank you so much for having and me. And thank you for joining us here, because I know this can't be easy for you. You're looking at this, and the Department of Justice arrested you know, 70 current and former employees. Every borough, one third of all the NYCHA units, you know, this has been going on for about 10 years. How could this have gone on? Because it doesn't seem like it's a bunch of individuals. It feels more systemic if it's that widespread. It's gone on for 10 years, but NYCHA had no knowledge of it. How could that have happened? Well, the thing is, NYCHA did have knowledge that there were issues with um, some of our lower level employees. Um, we worked very collaboratively with the Department of Justice, uh, with specifically with DOI and our Inspector General, to really root out this type of behavior. Um, and really, today and yesterday is a defining moment for NYCHA. We have absolutely no tolerance for this type of behavior. It just can't happen. Public housing is too important to New York. We house one in 16 New Yorkers, so we have to do better, and our employees have to do better. If you look at the math of it, they say $2 million in bribes on $13 million in contract. That's the one, uh, what, 15%, really, when you do the math, of 15, 15 cents out of every dollar. You know, that's a big part of the NYCHA budget. What do you do going forward to make sure that this doesn't happen? Because you can have a zero tolerance policy, but it's about doing something about it. A hundred percent. And when we first worked with DOI, when they first started investigating this back in 2021, we implemented a series of reforms to take some of the control out of picking contractors out of the development. But the reason why we do it in the first place, the reason why you can read about micro purchases in the uh, federal rules regarding procurement is because we need that flexibility we have we basically run a city within a city so in order to provide services to our contra, uh, to our residents quicker we needed that flexibility now we need a, a bit more control so what I don't understand is this has been going on for at least 10 years right at least there was a federal monitor overseeing NYCHA for five of those years how did this still continue with the federal monitor overlooking things you know what in in fairness both to to NYCHA and the federal monitor the reality is is when people are accepting bribes they can be very very tricky about things and it takes the you know uh, collaboration with law enforcement to really root it out and we saw yesterday that when you look at the complaints and you you see that it's been going on some people it was three thousand dollars three years ago mm. you know maybe they took a bribe and they realized okay this is not the, you know for me but the reality is is once you go down that bad path you're betraying our residents you're betraying NYCHA you're betraying your colleagues and you're betraying the city of New York so does this explain why it takes so long if it ever gets done to fix anything in a NYCHA apartment we hear about no air conditioning no heating for months mold Rats, you, you name it, repairs not getting done. Now will they get done? So interestingly, when you look at um, the U.S. Attorney's uh, press conference, they say that the work actually did get done. Uh, On for... what timetable? It doesn't happen. So... Like in private, in the private world, things get done in a timely manner, not years. So NYCHA is a very large public housing authority that has suffered from decades of disinvestment. So we uh, work on the elevators, the heat. We've made incredible strides under our HUD agreement. Um, we've met uh, so many metrics regarding the replacement of elevators, the replacement of heat. But 
it's like a house. If you ignore it for too long and then you go back to try to fix everything at the same time, you're never going to be able to do that in a timely way. So we are doing the best that we can with the resources that we can um, and the resources that we've had historically. Talk about resources here. I know you're the CEO of NYCHA and not a federal prosecutor, but is there any expectation you're going to get any of the money back? Well, it's interesting that you asked that because when we were talking with um, RIG about it, I said, any way we can get back that money, if I have to go to every single trial mm. and make a victim's impact statement, because what these people have done, both to NYCHA, to our residents, uh, I'm there. Do you think this is the tip of the, the iceberg? I, Something, something's not right. Something smells fishy. It just takes way too long. There's too many people who suffer in NYCHA. They pay their bills and they don't have the services that should come along with that. Well, remember, these were micro purchases. We actually have other procurements for larger scale projects. But when you think about something like you raised mold, mm -hmm. mold is not just about the mold. We're talking about the pipes that are 50, 60, 70 years old and the work that hasn't been done on them for 50, 60, mm. 70 years. So when you think about it systemically, you can, I can go in and paint a, you know, a, a wall that has mold, but if I don't fix the underlying root causes, it's gonna keep coming back. So who replaces the people that are arrested right now? So thankfully, because we work so collaboratively with our inspector general, um, we were able to operationalize a fix. Pre-plan, um, so to speak? Pre-plan, exactly. Okay. Um, to make sure that we had continuity of services for our residents and for other employees that work in the field every single day. Uh, we do have a sound, uh, an interview with the president of the Frederick Douglass House's Resident Association, and she basically has been expressing what uh, we talked about here. But let's listen to Carmen Quinones. We have white collar people, we have blue collar people, we got everybody living in, in Douglas houses. And they pay rent and they work hard and they should get the repairs that they so desperately need. You know, um, that's, that, that's the bottom line. Correct. The bottom line. All right, Lisa, you know, you got your hands full. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. We appreciate Thank you. you taking the time out to join us today. Thank you so much. Try and put a little bit of perspective on this. Lisa Thank you. Bo